By default, when we create a web API in ASP.NET Core, it is configured to use JSON. The idea is that different clients of different technologies can communicate with our application, sending and receiving information using the JSON format. However, some API clients may prefer to use another format, such as XML. We will configure a web API to support XML. In addition, we will talk about how our clients can request information in both JSON and XML. We will see the accept and content type headers and we will talk about content negotiation. The first thing that we are going to do is to create a web API in ASP.NET Core 3.1. For that, we are going to go to create new project, ASP.NET Core web application. We are going to give the project a name and we will press enter. We are going to select API ASP.NET Core 3.1 and create. With this, we have our project created and in the Solution Explorer, if we go to the controllers folder, you will see that we have a weather forecast controller, which provides us a get method that we can use to test. The idea being that we want to request information from this endpoint. Specifically, we want to request information in the JSON and XML format. Also, we are going to create an HTTP POST method so that we can demonstrate that our web API is capable of receiving information in both JSON and XML format. So let's say post and let's say weather forecast and forecast. Weather forecast is a model that comes with our ASP.NET Core application. And we're going to pretend that we're going to save information into the database and then we're going to return a 200 OK. Now to configure our project, so that it can send and receive XML, we have to go to the startup class here, to the configure services method, and here we are going to say add XML, data contract serializer for matters, and with this, it is enough to send and receive XML information in our application. So what we are going to do is that we are going to press Control F5 to run our application, and here as you can see we have the data in JSON format. This is because JSON is the default serializer of our application. But as we said, now we can request information in XML format. For that, what we're going to do is that I am going to copy this and I'm going to come to Postman so that I can request the same information. But here I have the liberty to modify the HTTP headers as I please. As you can see, we made a request to the same endpoint and we receive data in JSON format. If we go to headers, we are going to see that in temporary headers, we have accept anything, which means that we are telling the web API to send us the information in whatever format it wants, but we want to specify a format. So for that, we can say accept and we can say application JSON, which is a media type. And with this media type, we are saying to the application that we want the representation of the resource to be in JSON format. So if we click here in send, we are going to see that we have again JSON format here. But now, because we know that through the accept header, we can inform the web API in which format we want the response to be, we can say application XML, and then I can press send. And now we have the information in XML format. So the accept header says basically in which content type our client wants to receive the information. We can use media types like application JSON and application XML. We can also use application zip, but what is going to happen with application zip? Well, if we send, you are going to see that we receive a 200 OK, but the data is in JSON format again. This is because by default, as we said before, our web API returns data in JSON format. And because we have not configured our web API to return application zip, then our web API defaults back to the default format, which is JSON. If you want, you can configure your web API so that if it cannot serve the response using the media type requested by the client, then it throws an error, it returns an error. We are not limited to just use one media type here in the accept header. We can, for example, say application XML. So we are saying, send me the resource in the zip representation format or in XML format. If we press send, we are going to see that now we have the data in XML. What is going on here is called content negotiation because our client is saying, send me the information either 
in zip format or in XML format. And the Web API says, okay, I cannot reply to you in zip format, but I can use the XML format to handle your request. So what the Web API does is that it uses the first media type that it can work with. So that means that if we change this to JSON, then our Web API is able to use JSON. Therefore, the content type of the response is going to be application JSON. And if I change the order, XML first and then JSON, if I press send, we are going to get XML because by content negotiation, the first media type that our Web API can handle is XML, so that is the one to be used. Now, how do we know in which media type is the response of our HTTP request? Well, for that, we can go to the headers of the HTTP response and we can see the content type header, which says application XML. So as you can see, through the content type, we are being informed about the media type used for the payload of the HTTP response. When we say payload, we mean the response body. We are going to use that same content type header, but in the HTTP request headers to indicate to the Web API that we are sending information in either JSON or XML format. So let's do that. Let's copy this. Let's create a new tab. Let's paste this, post, and let's first make an example with the JSON format. If we go to body row and we say JSON, then we're going to see that we get a new header here. And what that header is, is the content type header that says, hey, the information that I am about to send you is in JSON format. And that is because we're selecting JSON here. So what we are going to do is that I am going to go back here just to make this a little bit easier. I am going to say JSON, JSON, and I am just going to copy this and I'll paste it here. I will come here and paste it and I have to remove temperature in Fahrenheit because that is a formula. And then I am going to press send and we have a 200 OK. And that is fine, but now we want to do the same with XML format. So for that, again, I am going to copy this. I am going to create a new tab, let's say post body, raw, and XML. And if we go to headers, you are going to see that we have content type application XML because the payload is going to be in XML format. So let's go back here and let's request a media type or MIME type of application XML. Let's press send. I will copy this weather forecast and I will paste it here. And as you can see, we have date summary and temperature in Celsius. And if I press send, then we're going to get a bad request. And we have a bad request because we're not saying, we're not indicating the namespace of this XML. So for that, we're going to go back here and we're going to see that we have this attribute XMLNS and I'm going to copy it. And as you can see, what it has is the name of the assembly in which the type is located. So I am going to paste it here. And now if I press send, you are going to see that we get again a 200 OK, which means that now our web API can handle JSON and XML format. And we also learn that through the accept header, we can indicate the media type of the response that our client wants and that we can use content negotiation so that we can send several MIME types or content types to the web API so that it can choose whichever content type it can handle best. And finally, we saw that with a content type header, we can specify the format of the payload sent to the web API or the format of the payload sent from the API to us.